Flathead, like all fishing, you're looking for structure. In this little bay, quite often they'll sit in these corners. So what I'll do, I'll cast into the corner and then I'll show you the action that I actually use on the rod for flathead. <clears throat> so I've just put that in the corner. I just wind the slack up and what I'm doing is just twitch up. It's really a shake of the wrist. Let the lure sink to the bottom, wind the slack up. Flick up a little bit, let the lure wind to the bottom. Take the slack up, pick it up, back to the bottom. Now what that's doing, that's just acting like a little um, bait fish. It's jerking up off the bottom, then the lure will naturally swim back down. So what you're trying to do is just keep thinking of a little bait fish and what it would look like in the water. A good way always is at home if you've got a swimming pool or where you can get some clear water, practice there until you can get the action. Um, but that's just it, it's really sort of shaking the rod tip. You don't want to lift it too high. Um, because each time you do it, the actual lure comes up off the bottom. If I lift the rod tip about 600 mil, the lure's probably coming up off the bottom about a metre. I'm only fishing here in about a metre of water, and generally we'll fish for flathead in a metre to 1.4 metres. Um, and that's where we get most of our fish. They'll get up on top of the sandbanks um, at high tide, which it is now. Always also try and look for little bait fish and things that are around. Um, usually where you see bait jumping on the surface, the flathead will be under. What you'll see, there's a drain just ahead of us here. What we do is cast, it's a natural place, there's bait food's going to come down from in there. Just cast it right in the middle there. Twitch it, just shaking the rod tip. Not too much action. Yep, yeah, we're on. That's all you have to do. We'll try and land this once you can see it. It's just literally just little twitches. If you fish the structure, you fish the right place, you'll catch the fish. Let's go grab the net. There we go. Nice little flatty. I'll just get the lip grips so you can have a look. It's actually a cracker. There he is, nice fish. You can just see it's been caught on a. Um, just get some pliers, they've got little nasties in there, I might go get them out. Let's grab some pliers. I'm going to show you what I've caught it on. Caught on a Lumo, Bozo's Lumo Smilk Galaxia. That's the lure there, a little green jig head. And that's a curl tar. They're really effective. They're a 75 mil lure. Um, I'm using 12 pound leader, 8 pound braid. Um, the leader is fluorocarbon. So that's how you do it. And you two, you know, just fish the structure. And um, I might let this guy go, he's not real well. Okay, what we're doing, we're just fishing a bit of structure here where there's a gutter coming out. We showed you earlier what we're looking for. I'm just going to cast right up. I'll show you the action we use for flathead. I've got a few different ones where the curl tail use it slower and a little bit less movement. So just cast it up there. Why don't you wind the slack up? I'll just little twitches. Just little twitches. And let it stop. Little twitches. That's all we're doing, it's just a shake, it's coming from the wrist. Just little twitches. So you haven't got to do too much, I'll just wind the slack, then twitch it up, wind the and we're on. So I'll show you what's happening, I'll get Kev to grab the net. So that's all you've got to do, not too much movement. It's a pretty good flathead too. the net. Okay, if you can just pass me the bogus, I'll just show, show everybody what, what 
we've got. So that's, that shows you the action. They haven't got to do too much. They're pretty hungry and this one's taken it right down. They love these bozos. I might just grab some pliers. So there he is, nice little eating flathead, beautiful. Um, so you haven't got to do a lot of action. The, the, the main thing is more than anything, it's just to be in the right place. It helps if you can see too, when you're an old bloke like me, you can't see too much. It's well and truly hooked, it's not going to come out in a hurry. Sorry everybody, I can't even see. <coughs> um, He's well and truly hooked. We're going to take this one home for a feed, so what I might do is just leave it on there. But that, that just shows it. It's just a flick of the wrist, gentle, but the main thing is to be in the right place. It's, um, di it's dinner in five minutes, Phil. Yeah. So we'll let that one leave that. We'll do a bit okay. more fishing. <coughs> the Kev's is on another fish. <coughs> there you go, it's another legal fish. This time it's on a um, Bozo's mullet, the paddle tail. We probably get more fish on the paddle tails than anything, especially this colour. Some of these, this is um, a colour I call cactus. It's just a brilliant colour in dirty water. Oops. <coughs> As you can see, they love them. They take them down deep. Yeah. This is, um, I changed this colour predominantly because the sun's a lot higher now. I, I know it might be a bit of a problem with the lens at times, but the sun's a bit higher, the water's a little bit dirty. So I've gone, gone to the cactus. Um, it is one of my favourites. Um, in fact, the first time I took my mother fishing, you may see it at the end of this video, I, I think Phil puts them on, and I put a, a three inch cactus on like this, and um, mum caught, well, how big was that fish? 80, 89, 89, 89 centimetre first, flathead. First um, fish ever on a soft plastic. Yeah, I'll just get Kev to come right the lens, just so you can have a bit of a look at that lure. Just back a bit more, Kev, back there. About there. Yeah, so you can just see the colour, it's got a black tail. And I'll just show you the tail. You can probably go a little bit closer than Phil's, that. Phil spent a lot of time perfecting this tail. You can see it's a very, very thin wrist, which gives it incredible action. So with the minimal amount of water movement or through the water, it's, it's creating a very um, unique tail action. Um, fish just seem to love it. And as you can see, you know, we, we just changed to this and basically we... You know, it was only five minutes since the last hook up on the Lumo, but now the sun's a bit higher. We've just gone to a, a darker colour, and cactus is one of my all-time favourites and uh, sort of my go-to lure. Anyway, we'll be back to the Yet fish. again, go the bozos. What do you reckon, Kev? They all right? Beautiful. 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 Beautiful.
we're passionate about what we do. Um, so just be respectful and um, have a great time. Back to fishing. We're out, um, sorry about the sun on the lens. We're just um, pulled up in the gutter and uh, hooked into a nice little flathead. There we have him. There we had him. He's gone. <coughs> but that's what happens. Just fish the structures and you'll catch the fish. Look for bait fish. That one was caught on a bozos with a green jig head. <coughs> so we'll take that one home for dinner. Okay, Kev's got another fish on. What lure you got this time, Kev? I've uh, got Bozo's Lumo, Curly Tar, which is one of our favourites in this uh, little sort of water and light. <coughs> that, uh, that fish was probably only in half a metre of water at the most, so I'm going to have to come around here, Phil. It's, I'm only using a six pound line, so. One thing too to try and do is keep flathead in the water. Even if you've got to drop your rod tip down. It's a pretty good fish. No real big hurry when they're well hooked. This is a good fish. I'll just get the lip drips out. <clears throat> One thing I mentioned before, we're talking about the Flathead Classic, and I'd really, if you live anywhere in Australia, it's um, held towards the end of the year, look up on the website, and um, this bloke doesn't want to open his mouth, I'll just give him a hand here. Leave him in the net, I'll just get him out. Um, he's got his gob well and truly shut. Okay. Hang on a sec. Now you can see this is a pretty good sort of fish. I was holding there. Um, yeah, what I was saying with the Flathead Classic, um, you want to get into it because look at this. Um, we usually get about 500 competitors. It's a catch and release tournament and you'll learn a lot. That's the thing and it's it's not a matter of wanting to have to win it or anything. It's the um, just the friendship and what you'll learn more than anything. Great atmosphere. So even tournaments in your local area Get involved with them and certainly get involved with your local fishing club. But anything to do with the um, Flathead Classic, just go search on Google um, Flathead Classic or look up the Gold Coast Sport Fishing Club and you'll get links to it. Uh, I think another thing worth mentioning with, with the comp, uh, you, you don't have to be a gun angler to win. Um, the best anglers in the, there don't go in the Anybody who, who enters goes in a draw for the boats and the prizes. So if you just want to come out, learn a little bit, see where other boats are fishing, meet a few people, have a nice meal, it's, it's certainly worth coming along. And um, as Phil said, you'll learn so much, and especially if you're from out of town and don't know these waterways. Um, you give an example, in real, real time too, you know, you, you may notice the video stops and starts, but real time, this is less than probably half an hour's fishing. So, all these fish, like we're still on at the low tide. Yeah. We and have half an hour, I'd say, is all we've been doing. Mm. And we haven't moved spots. We're, we're just actually on anchor, which is unusual for us. We normally use the electric, but it's, we're just waiting for the tide. It's not the best, but you can see the gutters starting to form behind us. Um, and this, these fish are queuing up to get the prawns or whatever's washing out. And this is the kind of structure you have to look for. You know, they're, they're just not in the middle of nowhere. Um, where there's ribbon weeds and sand flats and a gutter, you've got the perfect combination to catch, you know, 60, 70 centimetre flatted, whatever this is. We'll let you know like this, this one is actually, but it's measured. Always measure your fish, you don't want to be illegal, whatever. Okay, this is 69 centimetres. I said earlier, there's it, things you, you have to check after you caught a fish, and you can see this leader is, you know, I'm hoping you can see it in the camera, we're, we're not professionals here, but um, you can see this leader is very, very chafed. Now, that, that leader, um, was in that fish that you saw me just just catch, taking it down deep, um, very very chafed. So I will now cut this leader back and, and retie this jig head. Um, last thing I want to do is catch another one of those and just have it break off. One, one thing we'll show you with the jig head too is the knot. We'll just do a close up and hold that around. 
by there. You can see that knot on there is a loop knot. And we always tie a loop knot, not, not tied on it, because what that does is gives the lure a massive amount of action. Um, if you have it tight, the lure, I reckon it's half the action. Now what I'll do is pan around a little bit and show you now that this bay that we're in is emptying out. And that's why you end up with a little gutter coming down and all the fish really have to come down through the gutter. And, and it, there's, a, there's hundreds of places like this around, not only just here on the Gold Coast, but all over Australia. Always look for structure. And if you're not after structure, the other thing fish will go for is obviously bait. But there's got to be a reason for the fish to be there. So just look, look for the reasons. Think like a fish. Anyway, let's get back to it. What we're doing is a little gutter just up in here. It's the same sort of thing. The bait fish will be coming out and the flathead will sit out around here. It's only pretty shallow. We're probably in a metre of water or less. And the flathead will try and get right up there to get the bait. Um, there's quite a lot of prawn in the water. But just look for anything, any little bait fish or whatever. It's all you're just cast. It's right up the top. Now up there is probably only about 500, 400 mils of water. Just little twitches. Twitch it, relax. Twitch it, relax. Twitch it. Just keep doing that. Just pause. There's a fair bit of weed here, and that's a pretty good thing too, because flathead do get in the weeds here. You will get a lot of weed on your hooks, but where you got weed, sand, weed, sand, it's good ambush territory. Flathead, like a lot of fish, they're ambush predators. They'll sit on the bottom, buried in the sand. I just wanted to let everybody know too, you can probably guess where I'm from the Gold Coast. And uh, I'm involved in the local fishing club, the Gold Coast Sport Fishing Club. We run the Flathead Classic every year. So I'd really recommend everybody get involved with that. Get involved with your local fishing club to learn how to fish. That's how we've, what we've all done. We've all started that way. Um, and for local members, I just want to let you know, I've got a unique fishing boat where I've actually got torpedoes installed in the bow. So if I come here next week and there's 4,000 people here, I'm deadly accurate. <coughs> now where's where's Phil? Phil's got a fish. Okay. Let's put that over that side. And that's what happens, just little work it way. Only a little one. There you go, that's that's how you do it. Now that's a baby where there's babies, there's bigger ones. I'll show you another interesting way that you can hold a flathead. It's just put your thumb there and you can actually hold, sometimes you can hold them. It's pretty slippery but you know, you just got to watch up near the head where those gill rakers are. Those spikes, they really hurt. As I've said in one of my other videos, if you, if you, um, sorry little fishy. If you do get spiked, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'll just grab the towel. <coughs> just while Phil's doing that, another thing worth mentioning is when you've caught a flathead and they've taken it deep down, Please check your leader. They, they've got very abrasive teeth, and there's more than one flathead been lost with um, weak leaders. Um, so they do chafe it up, but check it. Don't risk it because the next flathead could be the big one. And um, you know, when you're fishing 12-pound mono or fluorocarbon as a leader, um, you, you seriously don't want it abraded. So um, please check that um, every time that um, you've caught a flathead or the flathead's taken it down deep. Now, look, one other thing too. Flathead have got these nasty spikes up behind the head. You will inevitably get whacked by one. If you do, they've got a poison in them. Just rub this finger where you've been spiked underneath them there, and it, it seems to counteract the actual poison. Let this little one go. Off, off he goes for another day. So that just shows you how simple it really is. Um, you don't need a lot of action. The fish nearly always, they don't bite like normal um, bait, they'll actually just grab it because it, that, that's why it's extremely important to have the lure, the profile of a fish. So they're, not, they're not thinking, oh, what is this thing? They just think it's a fish and whack. Anyway, we'll okay, Deb's on again.
still on the tide, um, we're getting here for the low tide, and there's a lot of bait busting up, but as the tide gets better and better, and lower, lower and lower, um, we'll get more fish, but these are all really good fish, and again, it's the action we're using, Bozo's lures are exceptional, obviously I'd say that, but look, they're all designed in Australia um, for our fish, and um, they work. You know, I might not have the budgets for some of the big guys, but pretty good at dropping the fish as well. But, um, <clears throat> the grips. I was saying earlier on, check your leader. I've just caught that fish, I'm checking my leader. Even a small one will rasp up your leader. So that's just a really nice little fish. That's probably about 46, 47 centimetres. A beautiful eating size fish. Um, but no, that's it, just not a lot of action and just let the, the fish, we're noticing today we're actually pausing a fair bit in between our little wrist flicks. And, um, but they're going to get more and more active as the day goes on or the next hour or so till the low tide. Another one up. I think two signs, smaller ones you haven't got to play them, this one's a little bit better, but I'll show you more, just bring it forward, wind the slack. Keep pressure on them all the time. Oh, he's foul hooked, that's why I feel a bit better. He's wrapped around. <clears throat> you always think you've got a shark on when you're there, foul hook. There's still another good fish. This is probably about 45. Um, no illegal limits on flathead. Dusky flathead are um, minimums 40 centimetres and maximum now 75 centimetres. But I'd encourage you anything over 70, definitely put them back because they're always going to be breeding females. And, um, and that's really important. This one's wolf velour again though, even though it's um, just hooked under that spike that I was telling you about that you don't want to get your fingers near. Anyway, we'll catch some more.